here to remember the life of Vicki Lynn Morton. Vicki Lynn Patterson, June 21st, 1950. She died at St. Anthony's Medical Center in Carroll, Iowa. are here. Thank you all for coming. And uh, Paul Bearers, honorary Paul Bearers, are Butch, Wes, Kirk, and Lisa Patterson, or Lisa Hummerkaus, and also uh, Galen and Joel Bornhoft, Shaw Lowry, and David Huffines. We want to begin by saying that you probably noticed she was a person of faith. Um, everywhere she went, she shared it. And she would want nothing more than to have the opportunity to share it even after she passed. And so I thought it would be appropriate, and we all did, if her daughter Sadie could share her testimony and how she came to faith in Messiah Yahshua. When we call Yahshua, most people call him Jesus, we call him by his Hebrew name, Yahshua. He's a beautiful kid. He did a good job. <laughs> and my mom. She always wrote. We would find notebooks and writings everywhere and uh, Gabe, we were looking through family pictures and uh, Gabe, uh, Gabe actually found her personal testimony that she wrote out several several years ago I would say probably like 25 or so years ago Vicki Bornhoff's personal testimony I was 12 years old when I asked Jesus Yahshua into my heart and was baptized with water the same day I remember it so clearly why I talked with him for hours and I knew he was my friend. I didn't go to church after that Sunday and it was only once in a long while when I could go again. My family were lake people and Sunday was used for fun and pleasure. One night a few years later I had a layover. I can't remember the city. I was a stewardess for United Airlines. My life was over, so I thought. All the hurts, insecurities, you name it, were ready to explode in me. I had become suicidal, a drunk, and bitter to the core. The glamour of traveling all over the world, plenty of dating, Plenty of money and material things were no longer fulfilling my life. Fear and death overwhelmed me. I didn't know that she had died for my sins. And I knew I was doomed for hell. Now, I knew he was my friend, but not my savior. In my hotel room, I was sobbing and accidentally opened the drawer next to my bed. 
there before me was a Gideon Bible. I don't ever remember reading the Bible. And I turned the pages and came up on Psalms 6. And Psalm 6 says, I am weary with my groanings. All night I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with tears. My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows old, becomes all of my enemies. And she says, it goes on to say, for the Lord, for Yahweh has heard my weeping. Yahweh will receive my prayer. And she said, I took that to heart and things began to happen. I met with other believers and a couple I grew up with invited me to dinner. My friend read scriptures on the Holy Spirit and he asked if I would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said yes. At age 24, my life was never the same. Yahweh removed me from my old friends, put me in the spirit-filled church. One year later, later, I met my husband. Yahweh directed us to places where he began to teach me the scriptures. She writes Isaiah 61.1. He came to heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free. She says it's been a long journey of healing and miracles. And he wants to give me much more. Thank you, Yeshua. Vicki Born Pop. Son Zach would like to share a song that was Vicky's very favorite song. I wrote the song uh, back in the glory days. It's definitely uh, <laughs> from scripture. Definitely one of her favorites. And, uh, all she could ever talk about when she talked about music was the song. And probably one of the only songs that actually take, took out of the scriptures. And I think that's what made us so important <coughs> and, uh, and so loving for her. But it's uh, from Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Um, my mom ran the race. And that's what it's about. I run the race. Set my peace. Endurance. I will fall on my face. I'll cross the line in his place. I will lay down the weight in the sin that so easily mistakes me. And I will run. I will lay down the weight in the sin.
Hallelujah, that was beautiful. <laughs> Spoke last night with the family. So many people had stories to share. Neil, I mean, he just described Vicky as a true helpmeet. He said everybody knows she can be a little fiery and spunky. <laughs> Some might even say she was pushy, but Neil came to realize why she was that way, particularly with her faith. It was not pride, it was not arrogance, it was not trying to be a control freak. It was because she loved. She wanted people to be all that our Father in Heaven called them to be. And Neil said she, she pushed him to meet his expectations of himself. He said he was the only, she was the only woman who would stand up to him and tell her the absolute truth, whether he wanted to hear it or not. I mean, he's three times her size, but she wasn't afraid to tell him what he needed to hear. And it was all out of love. It was out of love. She loved him, and she was madly in love with him, and he was madly in love with her. She never questioned his integrity or his heart just want to make sure he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. And there were highs and lows, but never a time that they did not love each other. He would swing her around and kiss her face, and she'd tell him to stop, and he'd say no, but he would say no because he just loved her so much. He wanted her to know that, and the last few months she asked him to come and lay with her in the hospital bed, the hospital, and, and just hold her and she would cry and she'd give, her, give him that Vicky smile and say I love you Neil she'd fall asleep almost nightly she would say Neil and say yes she said I just want to make sure you're still there he said I'm not going anywhere she said you taking your pills <laughs> You know, your papa to hundreds wasn't even thinking about herself. Six months and she never complained one time. And she never lost her smile. Nurses would fight over who's going to get to take care of Vicky. <laughs> they actually had shifts and they're all who's going to get to Vicky uh, area of the hospital. And uh, because she touched people everywhere she went. She shared the love of Messiah wherever she went. Something happened one time. She had convulsions. Every nurse on the floor zoomed into the room was doing something. Uh, seven girls are all around the bed, and two of them were writing things down. Neil never saw anything like it. The people at the nursing home... You'd think they're used to seeing death almost every other week or so, but when Vicky passed, they cried. He brought flowers. Everywhere she went, she was sharing love, the love of Messiah. Her children, Trinity, Zach, and Sadie, they loved their mama. Scripture says, the virtuous woman, children, rise up and call her blessed. Isn't that the truth? Trinity, Zach, and Sadie all talked about the love their mother had for them and for the grandchildren. She'd send them little notes of love and encouragement, wrote little notes on the back of their pictures. She's always thinking about them. She always made time for the grandchildren. She was all about her babies, rocking them to sleep, making songs for them writing notes, pictures, personal prayers for each one. 
She loved to create things, special things for the children. She would write them poems. She did a lot of reading, a lot of writing. She's got a Bible right here. I don't think there's a single page on here that doesn't have a note. She was very inspirational because even in the darkest times, she held on to her faith. Trinity and Sadie says she protected us and watched over us, kept us from harm. A watchman on the wall. Sadie said she was my best friend. And I'll miss her a lot. She was all of our best friend. Zach talked about her compassion for people, her motherly care. Vicki loved her son's music, was very proud of her children. Zach said he put up, she put up with a lot, but it didn't shake her. She was dedicated to showing love. Everyone said she had a certain style about her. Classy, dignified. Trinity loves the beautiful color of her hair. She aged with grace. She valued modesty. She always tried to take care of herself wherever she went. She had elegance and class. No matter what she was wearing, and would be very modest about it. She's described as fun-loving, witty, kind of a goofy spirit at times, <laughs> spontaneous. She loved to make her home environment comfortable for her guests and for her family. She loved plants and what it did for her room. She adored lilies, chamomile, flowers. But all the children knew she loved Neil, her husband. With a true and genuine love for his concern, for his well-being, she would worry about his health and she was always keeping him accountable. It's because she was a loving person. Everything she did, whether you wanted her to do it or not, was born out of love. And she was faithful in letting you know how much she loved you. She always wanted to talk about anything. Drop everything and talk to you. I myself have sent many young women her way who will come back and report that was an amazing phone call. I was so blessed by that phone call. And that smile that beautiful smile. She said, Sadie said she even smiled when she was doing she was gonna to have to go back to Iowa City. Still smiling. And encouraged her. Now one thing everybody mentioned was her unwavering commitment to faith. She said their mom and dad cultivated a heart of prayer in their life. Her prayer life, her study of the scriptures yielded a faith that was so amazingly strong, people would marvel over it. Nothing could stand between her and her faith in the Almighty. No matter how sick she was, no matter what happened, she would still proclaim our Heavenly Father's name, Yahweh. If you haven't heard already, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. When I open up this Bible, one of the first places I turned to, it said, Whoever calls upon the name of Yahweh will be saved. She believed that. Now most Bible translations take it out. But she didn't. Her faith stood out like a sore thumb no matter what. That was number one. Her love for people was her leg legacy. She wanted to be a witness no matter what she was doing in her life. Or where she was. Whether it was high V or the hospital. It didn't matter. <laughs> Sunshine, rain, or snow, something good was always happening from Yahweh. Zach said his mom saw both sides of the spectrum. She lived the glamour and the fame and the prestige, had the money, but she chose something greater. She could have lived in a castle and been a queen. She chose her faith first. She had a hard road to walk, but for her it was an easy road to choose chose a path less traveled. She saw beyond this age. 
she saw beyond the grave. Mm -hmm. She faced rejection and persecution at times, was beat up a little bit by those who were riled up by her forwardness. But to the very last breath, she held on her faith. She would not stop. She loved her life. She saw something that people did not see. Vicki was so passionate. She didn't want to see you missing out on the life she joyfully lived and the strength that she was joyfully receiving. She wanted you to understand the Savior is so amazingly wonderful, a source of endless strength in dark times. And He loved you. What we see here in this casket is not the end of Vicki. This is just a transition. Her final words were, I want to go home. People would say to me sometimes, how do you know there's a creator? How do you know that he's real? Life is a miracle. Just life is a miracle. Every cell in our body has DNA. Scientists compare it to a book of instructions. It instructs cells on how to do anything from how to make a a blade of grass grow and collect energy from the sun to how your human body is constructed. How can such intelligence come together by random chance? Look at the palm of your hands. What makes it do this? You know, explain that. You're lying on your bed and you hear your heart beat in your pillow at night. There's a loving creator who put the instructions in your cells to make that happen. Vicki knew that. And she was personally touched by his love. We may wonder how can it be he loves us and yet there's all this evil in this world and there's death and there's disease. But you know, Vicki found there's a really good answer in the scriptures. That I know for myself, if my daughter came to me and I made her say, I love you, Daddy, that wouldn't mean anything. But if she came to me on her own and said, I love you, Daddy, that would mean everything. And because we have a Heavenly Father who wants us to love Him out of a free will choice and not out of making a machine out of us and forcing us to, to say these things to Him, He gave us the free will to choose whether we want to love or not love. It's our choice. Vicki chose to love. And we all learn it's because he loves us first. And that's why. Because the day is coming when each will have to give account for our actions. Just as we stand before a judge on the earth for the crimes we commit on the earth, we have a judge in heaven who will cause us to stand before Him, and we will have to give account. But for those of us who, like Vicki, chose eternal life through our Savior, who came and said, I will bear the punishment that you deserve for your sin if you only turn to me and receive salvation through me. Whatever your need is, He covers it. You need to be loved. Scripture says, Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. John 15, 13. If you want to be valued, you know the very hairs of your head are numbered. You want to be heard? He says, Yahweh, his eyes are on the righteous, his ears are open to their prayers. You want to be granted peace? He says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You want to be encouraged? He says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You want provision? Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and he will add all these things to you. 
You want to be accepted? As far as the east is from the west, so far he's removed our transgressions from us. You want to be understood? Scripture says, you know, my sitting, my, my writing, rising and my sitting down. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. You want guidance? It says, you hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will receive me in glory. You want to be rescued from trouble. Scripture says that He is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, even if the earth is removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling, He is with us. And if you want eternal life, it says the dead and Messiah will rise first. And we here are alive will remain and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to rise and meet our master in the air. And we will always be with him. Looking for someone you can really trust. Scripture says, Blessed is the one who trusts in Yahweh, and whose hope is Yahweh. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. It will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green. It will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor cease from yielding fruit. If you want a humble teacher to give you rest for your soul, our Savior said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He provides our every need. And it's as easy as saying, I yield my will to your loving ways, and I receive your sacrifice as atonement for my transgressions. It's that easy. That easy. And when He leads you, you don't have to do everything at once. He'll take you step by step. Like a gentle shepherd, He'll take you step by step. Just like He led Vicky. Step by step. Vicki would say it's the best decision she ever made. I would say the same, and so would millions of others. It's because He does provide our every need. The only question is whether we value it. Now I'm sharing these things because I know Vicki would want me to. She would, if she could speak with us today, she would say, Come join me. Come join me. I want to be with you forever. I want you to experience the love of Messiah. It's amazing. It's real. And it explains her zeal and her passion. Every single one of you that loved Vicki and her positive attributes, the things that she brought into your life, everything that was good about her is seen in our Savior. Everything you loved about her is seen in Him. And what you're really loving is Him shining through her. Sounds like someone I would like to get to know. He already knows you. The hairs of your head are all numbered. If you don't know Him, I encourage you, come talk to me. I won't judge you. I'll just help. I'm not here to condemn, I'm just here to bless and build up. We are all invited to a luncheon at the Legion Hall in downtown Westside on Highway 3. I'd be glad to pray with you there. Or, if you're thinking of getting to know our Savior, I'll pray with you here or anywhere. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I was amazed as I read this scripture after Vicki passed 
and how beautifully it described the very experience that she had toward the end of her life. <laughs> it says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the excellence of the power might be of Yahweh, or Elohim, and not of us, being hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, being perplexed, but not in despair, being persecuted, but not forsaken, being thrown down, but not destroyed always bearing about the body, the dying of our master, Yahshua, that the life of Yahshua might be manifested in our mortal body. Her life was manifested, even in sickness, and even in trouble. The Messiah's life was manifested. Will you join me in prayer? O oh, Father Yahweh, Almighty Creator, thank you for the life of Vicki Lynn Bornhoft. Thank you for the wonderful ways about her, the way she loved, the way she blessed, the way she helped, the way she was a mother to so many. We are so thankful to have her for the years that we had her. Oh, Father, I know she was passionate about sharing everyone about the love of your son, Yahshua, and your love for all. I pray, Father, if there are any who are contemplating the possibility of walking with you, that you would touch their hearts and they would cry out to you saying, I give my life to you. I want to walk with you. I want to learn from you. And they would receive the Messiah Yahshua whom you've sent. Thank you for the people who are here in this cold and gray day here, Father. We thank you for the light of your word. And most of all, thank you for leading all of us. And thank you for Vicki Lynn Bornhoft. I pray that her spirit will live on, her character traits will live on, and our actions also. And truly yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Yahshua's name. Amen. Thank you all. Peace. 
your city There's peace in the midst of adversity Glory, oh glory to your name Oh holy, holy to your name Oh yeah, yeah We bow down as you we bow down We bow down Yes, you, yes, we bow down We kneel before your throne on high We kneel before your throne all night Glory, oh glory to your name Oh holy, holy to your name Oh la 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 yeah. La 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 mm.